Hey there, friendos. Newborn Kilika welcoming you back to another weekly-ish, weekly or bi-weekly dose of nostalgia. Today, we will be taking a look at uh, Mario 64 with the unfortunate, unfortunate side effect of if Mario touches an object, he does in fact explode into a single coin. So, of course, this is a sort of challenge, so we have to establish some rules. The rules are as follows. Mario blows up, i.e. if he touches an object, he dies, and we unfortunately will not be able to collect that star. A star is technically collected when it disappears from the world. Naturally, touching a star itself will blow us up, so... We have some problems as far as trying to actually beat the game, but in light of this, I have decided to use a 100% completed save file of Super Mario 64, and instead of going for, you know, to complete the game, we're just going to see how many stars we can get in each level, as if each star were its own vacuum. With that in mind, levels like bub -Omb Battlefield or Thwomp's Fortress will be completely unlocked to us, and we'll be able to get the stars in any order that we prefer. And while we're here, hey, if you do enjoy the video, please do consider doing the things down below. Ring the bell, hit the subscribe button, etc, etc. I'm not gonna waste your time on it for too long. Let's hop right into the Super Mario 64, or as I called, Super Explodio 64 challenge. And we're gonna see how many stars we can get in each level. At this point, it's basically completely impossible to actually get anywhere in the level because as we can see, signs blow us up. Sometimes random air will actually blow us up. I figured it was pretty important to actually establish what would blow us up and what would not, because at this point, I didn't actually know what it would be. Things like water are completely safe. Walls and railings and those sorts of things are safe as well. Signs are not. As you might be expecting, the castle doors, no matter what angle you come at them from, you are not entering this door. Although, I did actually manage at some point when testing this theory to get into bob -Omb Battlefield without blowing up. So it is technically possible, but it's probably a very, very specific trick. Even our good buddy Toad will Thanos snap us out of existence for even trying to have the insolence to speak with him. Oh, and the doors inside the castle are also a no-go. Also this wall, because... Why not? My only guess as to why this happens is that the interaction box for the signs on the other side of the wall are either inflated in the mod or are large enough to reach through the wall. And when Mario bumps into that wall, it's actually registered as interacting with the interaction box of the sign on the other side of the wall here. And sometimes uh, interacting with an object just crashes the game, which really, uh, really, shoves a wrench into my plans. But enough dilly-dallying around, it is on to bub -Omb Battlefield and to defeat the King bub -Omb. Entering this area with our uh, precious lives in tow, we find out just how many objects are looking to end Mario's life, such as Box, Goomba, Thin Air. This is a problem. Well, there's at least one to two coins per level that we're not gonna be able to get. That means we also cannot get the red coins in each level or the 100 coin star. Unfortunately, because of this uh, red coin right here, we cannot even free the chain chomp to get the first star to progress through the game. Were this the case, we may actually be able to complete the game. <laughs> Probably not, but maybe. Bear in mind, we are also not allowed to grab up a bomb to try bomb clipping. I was a bit curious about cannons. I kind of figured they'd explode and uh, sure enough, right here was actually when I kind of established that it must be the interacting box that is actually what's blowing you up. Given the fact that we are on a warp here, there's no object tied to it. In fact, it's just an interactive box. It must be what the interactive box is actually doing is blowing us up. You're even allowed to interact with certain objects that really aren't supposed to be interacted with, and the consequences are... interesting? The heart kills you. Of course it does. King bob -Omb's never really been a problem. Yay. The only thing we can actually do in bob -Omb Battlefield, and in fact the entire reason why I made these kind of in a vacuum, you know, each star on its own, could we be able to obtain it? Because you can't actually get a total of one star in bob -Omb Battlefield. Yikes. I was a little bit worried at the beginning of this race here because I thought you had to actually touch the flagpole. As it turns out, you just have to be very close to it, but you're still able to collect the star, no problem. Well, collect is a very generous term for what happens here, but the star has vanished from the world and therefore it is ours. You blow up when you collect 
a star. That really never gets old, honestly. It's funny every single time. I find it interesting that we actually can interact with the exclamation point switches, which makes me quite excited for some other levels because, I mean, we can interact with switches, we could probably do a bunch of other stuff too, right? Going into Thwomp's Fortress. Now, obviously, there's a boss in this area too, and surely when we touch him, we'll explode. I mean, when we touch this piranha plant, we explode, but at least we can defeat a piranha plant once. Now, immediately, I decided to go for the easy stars here, such as Blast into the Sky, and... That's a problem. With Blast into the Wild Blue, I believe it's called, taken care of, we have our second star. Blue coin switches are A-OK -okay to hit. Unfortunately, the blue coins are shiny but deadly blue coins. Navigating a level that relies so much on vertical movement is pretty interesting when you have to avoid every single coin and enemy that they place in your way. You really gotta get kinda creative. I mean, granted, it's not too difficult. It is only technically level two, but still, it's a neat little twist on a familiar level. And I swear, this sign has the largest hitbox known to man. I could literally fit a second Mario in there. Decided it was time to man up and see if these thwomps could be destroyed. It's basically like Marty Dom for the old Call of Duty series. Well, some of uh, some of the old Xbox uh, Live gamers out there might know what I'm talking about with Marty Dom. Overall, the Thwomp King is relatively easy, bringing our star count up to three. With Chip Off Womp's block, we make our way to on top of the fortress. This again is relatively vanilla. There's nothing particularly in our way, although a bullet bill hitting us is instant death. So I guess that's extra challenge, bringing our star count up to four. It's kind of ironic, Fall into the Caged Island was one of the free stars that I thought I'd get from here, but unfortunately the wooden pillar had other plans. So I had to find a new way. I have one of two options. I could either try to learn Owlis real quick because the owl, of course, is out of the question as well, or just try a long jump from the top. <laughs> that is unfortunate, my man. It's a relatively tight jump, but you can get fall into the caged island without touching an object. A blast away the wall is where things tend to get a bit... Interesting? I've noticed so far that this little cheat that I've put into the game to make Mario explode here has actually made it so that hitboxes seem larger, or at least interactive boxes seem a lot larger. Technically, you can dive at this wall at a pretty precise angle and collect the star. This is evidenced by the fact that, if we play it back in slow motion, frame by frame, we can clearly see the shadow of the star in the wall right here. Mario jumps towards it, his head clips into the wall just in the perfect spot, the shadow is now gone, and on top of that, Mario explodes. There's nothing else that would make him explode in that area except the star if they had collected it. And I was able to replicate this one more time as well, so it wasn't a total fluke. Be it a quirk of the mod or just the funkiness of all the hitboxes in the Mario 64 universe, I consider that our fifth star. But I think I might have gotten off count at some point. We're actually at six stars right now, so uh, uh, just pay attention to the star counter in the top right. I'll be uh, up updating that a lot more reliably than I will be updating my brain apparently, so look to the top right. Putting ourselves into the intro area of Peach's Slide, we can actually learn that there are, in essence, different kinds of teleporting mechanisms in Super Mario 64, and the entrance to Peach's Slide is one of those that blows you up. Whereas we can get away with going into stuff like paintings, and in Tall Tall Mountain there is a quote-unquote painting transition that uses the transition of a painting. I'm guessing to put you in an entirely different world, but those are okay in this mod, whereas these are just, just plain not. You just blow up. So I guess we gotta get in there s somehow else. I turned off the code just long enough to get into Princess Peach's slide. Of course, turning the code on directly after that as well. And already Princess Peach's slide is about 10 to 20 times more dangerous than it was before. 
Remember, touching any of these coins, of course, is insta-death. I managed to just barely make it where I wanted to go, and, uh, well, I had a mean old surprise waiting for me as I barely, apparently, maybe, kind of, vaguely, caught a whiff of a glance of a coin on the way by, and it might have intersected my hitbox, potentially. But overall, even while being careful on the slide, it is very possible to get the secret star here for getting under 21 seconds. It's easy. But that raises another question. This box is technically an interactive box, and as you can see, unfortunately the star animation does not spawn quite in time to get us the star. If we were totally invincible, there might be a couple frames of invulnerability that Mario would be able to utilize essentially to collect the star, but the animation for the star spawning just takes too long to activate. Coming at it from the top does not seem to work. I say does not seem to work, as we'll find out later, that may not be entirely true, but that is something we'll come back to at a later time with new information. What are you hiding? What are you hiding in there? Naturally, because Peach's slide did not work, similar transitions would not work as well, and even if we could make it to the secret here, unfortunately, it's just eight red coins, which of course is completely worthless to us, to be completely honest with you. I'd rather have a health heart that kills me, at least that gives me a quick laugh. Instead of watching Mario just drown. Jolly Roger Bay. With the treasure chest in Jolly Roger Bay, I was fully prepared for them to just blow Mario up. But as it turns out, if you get them correct, you get to keep your life. If you get it wrong, you're dead though. Sometimes it really do just be like that, huh? Anyway, 8th star. Now my next thought was maybe we can obtain Can the Eel Come Out to Play, and sure enough, it is completely possible. I'm not really sure why he doesn't blow us up at this point. I mean, we technically touch the star, but I guess it's just a special kind of object when the star is in the world and then placed into another spot in the world that doesn't act as an interactive box. I don't really know what's going on, but we got another star. That's all I care about, honestly. Now, some people actually don't know, and it does really, really test your patience, but through the jet stream actually can be obtained with absolutely perfect swimming. It's actually a speedrunning trick that they use sometimes in some categories, such as the 100%, to obtain this star without the need of the metal cap. Now, that brings us to a grand total of 10 stars. Every other star in this area is completely unobtainable. It's either a red coin star, a 100 coin star, or it's contained inside of a box. I can't shake the feeling that there may very well be a way to get the stars in these boxes, but for right now, in this playthrough, we just don't know it. That is foreshadowing, my friends. With the three stars from Jolly Roger Bay in our pocket, we head to Cool Cool Mountain. Unfortunately, two stars are completely blocked off from us immediately. Make that three. We cannot touch the penguin. Of course, it's an interactive object. We can't seem to grab anything. We also cannot enter the hut here because these coins block our way. Trust me, I tried probably more than I should have to pick up this little penguin. No luck on that one. Luckily, since we are obtaining all these stars in a vacuum, we can go straight to the two stars that we can get, one being Snowman's lost his head. It's pretty well vanilla. You do have to be fairly careful of the tricky coins on the bridge here. Yeah. I don't know why he does that sometimes. I didn't realize he went into the cannon. That looked janky. <laughs> okay. But all in all, there's really not a whole lot that's actually stopping us from obtaining the stars. Pretty well vanilla. Luckily, the snowman is a bit more gentle than the toads and allows us to keep our life and collect our 11th star. For those of you that don't know, you can actually do a jump kick off the side of the world to essentially go to the area where wall kicks will work is, and just, it's basically vanilla at that point. Wall kicks will work is completely obtainable and our 12th star. And with that, it is time to finally face off against our enemy, Bowser. It went about as well as you might anticipate. Who would have thought all Bowser had to do was put a goddamn landmines? the entrance to his uh to his areas easiest easiest princess steal of his life even turning the code off to get in here doesn't really yield a whole lot because other than just being filled with coins and a completely linear level which actually does add a decent bit of challenge you know avoiding all the coins i've never been so scared of a goomba in my entire life other than a somewhat tricky jump over some coins which we will have to do multiple times in this game so get used to that the level is not terribly difficult the pipe blows you up go ahead and mark that on the list of bad things 
since we are playing on a completed save file, unfortunately I don't know what the interaction is between Explodio and the power switches, but I'm left to assume it probably blows you up. Even if it doesn't blow you up, you can't really obtain the caps anyway, so it's all pointless. Getting into Big Boo's Haunt is probably the most convoluted and complicated area to get into, not only because you have the door leading to the back courtyard, as well as the doors leading to the hallway leading to the back courtyard, you also have to deal with a boo that blows you up, and just the entry of the level. Just a volcano, a geyser of a blowing Mario upness. You can't get in. Main problem is even if you could get in, if you recall Big Boo's Haunt, it's basically all doors. There is absolutely nothing for us to do in this level. So I guess we just have to take that L, and I don't mean unlocking Luigi, and move on to the next level. So I guess we just gotta take that. Is that supposed to be a bu bomb out here? Why is there a bomb out here? Quirk of the mod, I suppose. Or it's spooky. Don't know which. So admittedly, we're not doing terribly great right now. We only have 12 stars in our pocket and we're headed into Hazy Maze Cave, which is a problem. Immediately, we're met with two doors and a, and a very touchy sign. But the problem here is the two doors. I don't know of any way to get around these two doors, but if technically we could, we could get to a lot more of the level. I can think of at least uh, two or three more stars that we could get out of this level, so the fact that these doors are here is kind of a big problem. It was at this point that I vaguely considered attempting to find a cheat or a mod that would actually remove the doors. I felt that that was kind of against the challenge though, because if we could remove doors from one area, what stops us from removing moving doors from every area. And in that case, our star count isn't really about how many stars you can get without touching objects. When do you stop the exceptions? That's what I'm asking. All right, day two. Actually, one of the most interesting parts of this is that even in the demo game, Mario still blows up. It just, it made me giggle and I was not expecting it. Ever wonder what would happen if Bowser won? I'm sure you see this coming, but Mips of course blows us up, so we can't obtain either of the Mips stars either. Heading into Lethal Lava Land, and immediately we're met with a whole host of problems. Not the least of which that the lava blows us up. It wasn't a good thing to fall into the lava before, but now this is all basically treated as a death plane. One of the reasons that Lethal Lava Land is as memorable as it is, is because you can kind of you know, damage boost around, and there's just a handful of other things that you can attempt to do, but it kind of takes it all away. The bullies are very bully -y today. Unsurprisingly enough, we can't touch any of the bullies, which means we can't do either of the bully-related quests. Transitions tend to kill us, so we're going to avoid those as well. The only star that we can actually obtain in this world is Red Hot Rolling Logs. One star from Lethal Lava Land. Still infinitely better than Big Boo's Haunt, though. Star number 13. And on to Shifting Sandland. I thought for sure we'd be able to get at least two stars here. There's one star that's just out in the open, super easy to get. And on top of that, we could probably get in the talons of the big bird. It's kind of ironic how strange the interaction boxes are for standing atop the four pillars. I'm guessing they tend to react as some kind of interactive box and therefore explode us. And even if we could stand tall on the four pillars and get the top of the pyramid to despawn or to destroy itself, it wouldn't really matter because there's a transition in there that would kill us anyway. Luckily, I was able to find a quote-unquote safe spot. If you jump at all, you die, but it's technically safe, and if you move out to the side far enough, you're not interacted by this coin of the hitbox. So my thought was we could probably get the star out of the talons of the bird, However, despite my best efforts, I just wasn't able to do it. I was always interacted with by the bird, and it never worked out, despite a couple of very good attempts. I mean, come on. Now, I know you're probably thinking, wow, newborn Keelix, this is going to be a very low star count, and you may be correct, but things, oddly enough, get a lot easier as the game goes on, which is exactly the opposite of the way that it should be, but it's a fact. So stay tuned for that. Unfortunately, we must end Shifting Sandland with just one star. So... Problem with Dire Dire Docks is you actually only have one chance to obtain Board Bowser's sub, and that's before the water recedes back to gain you access to Bowser in the Fire Sea. However, I'm going to go ahead and chalk this up as a victory for us because essentially there's no reason why we wouldn't be able to obtain the star. It's out in the open, we're able to get here just fine, so I don't see any reason why we wouldn't count it. However, as a quirk of the system, unfortunately we were not able to gain footage of us counting it, but in all it would be perfectly possible, allowing us to gain 
15 stars. I had a hunch that through the jet stream was going to be completely possible, simply because we actually are able to still collect these secrets, these manta rings, while we are dead, essentially. So my thought was if I can overlap the hitbox of the star once it spawns with Mario himself, it should automatically collect the star. I was at this for probably 45 minutes. It does have to be done perfectly. I need to get down to the bottom of that grate as well as have the insane luck, or timing I suppose, that it's just going to happen that a ring is going to come up at that time. Eventually I just put on a metal cap, standing in the very middle at the very bottom would simulate a perfect run. And if this doesn't do it, there's absolutely no way it's possible, which unfortunately seems to be the case. Naturally, collect the caps is completely unbeatable because we can't collect any caps or break any boxes. Manta Ray's reward and the pole jumping one are also not collectible. However, the treasure chest at the bottom of the ocean is completely doable, given some trial and error and shark dodging, of course. I think it's kind of interesting. I don't remember the fish ever doing this, but apparently the fish swarm your corpse and you die in the water. I apparently gain the powers of Aquaman, making Mario uh, in every way better than Aquaman. Don't at me. Snowman's Land is a relatively straightforward level. Anything to do with coins or boxes, unfortunately, we're not able to get yet. Stick around. I pro we're getting there, I promise. Promise we're getting to why I keep saying yet. In the Deep Freeze, which I'm pretty sure the name of this star is In the Deep Freeze, but either way, it's completely possible. Super easy open air star can be obtained uh, just simply by doing it in vanilla mode. It should go without saying that unfortunately the bully cannot be bullied. I was really, really hoping that the, the breeze would actually have a hitbox on it or like an interaction box for Mario. Because then I can say Mario was literally destroyed by a stiff breeze. Unfortunately, uh, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes comedy does not write itself. Snowman's big head is completely possible, albeit a bit more tricky just with all these deadly coins laying around. And for those of you that don't know, you can just ride on the penguin's head. I've seen people try to walk beside this penguin for a while, but you can just be on his head. It's super simple, way easier, trust me. That brings us to, I think, 17 stars if I have haven't lost count. I think 17 stars. I think. I'm not your babysitter dude. Look at the star counter. Now heading into wet dry world, I actually found something very interesting and that's that technically we can obtain stars from boxes, which is very interesting and a very divisive part of the challenge here because technically we interacted with a box. Okay, there are no questions in my mind that that box was interacted with. However, we were not penalized for it. I went back and forth with whether or not to actually include these stars. It's kind of like a speedrunner that were to use glitches to get a better time in this category. Usually there are glitch-less categories that protect from those sorts of things, but then again there's also glitched categories, or any percents, that usually do allow for these sorts of things. The fact of the matter is that given these parameters here in the mod that we're using, we are able to obtain the star. It's not exactly difficult, you just have to hit the exact center of the box enough so that you get this weird like landing animation instead of the bonking animation or any other kind of animation, this can be done with every box in the game. So I have decided to not include it in the base challenge. However, I will include them at the end as sort of theoretical stars. So this will be the first of the theoretical stars that we can obtain. Theoretically, we could get both plunder the sunken ship and Blast to the Stone Pillars in Jolly Roger Bay, Shocking Arrow Lifts in Wet Dry World. Using a bit of trickery and the almighty jump kicking to get up this slope here, we can actually obtain Whirl from the Freezing Pond as well as another theoretical star as it is in a box. This doesn't really help us out getting the turtle shell, unfortunately, but uh, we can obtain this star. Theoretically, it is possible. This also means that theoretically, there are two stars that are obtainable inside of bob Battlefield. That's because when you go to the floating island at the very beginning, there is a very specific trick you can use to get over there. In theory, you could use the same box trick that we've been exploiting here to gain that star as well. I mean, already that's a total of five theoretical stars that we've discussed. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about if these theoretical stars should be left in the star count. I mean, you can get them. I didn't turn the code off. It's allowing me to do it. And hey, if it's inside of the game, as far as I'm considered, it should be able to be used. But I do understand the other side of it as well, and I'm not going to include it, but I will amend them as theoretical stars. And with that whole debacle started, Wet Dry World will supply us with two theoretical stars. On to something a lot less theoretical and much more tangible, we have Tall Tall Mountain. Normally you would think you probably can't get the slide star, but you can just skip it because it's an open air star. You're going to notice lines of coins like this are actually the worst thing. You have to be very specific when you're trying to get over them, or you'll just blow up 
even if you're not really that close. <laughs> Do you remember how I said that later levels are actually a lot easier with this challenge? This is kind of when that starts to kick in. Blast to the Lonely Mushroom can essentially just be jumped to, uh, you know, getting rid of the whole blasting bit that would have, well, I guess it didn't really get rid of the blasting bit, but we got the star. As we were talking about the star slide earlier, you can essentially enter this area, but moving around it all just blows you up. It's almost like they put Mario in a small box in this area, and if he decides to leave, he's going to get the blow-ing up. Aside from that, scaling the mountain is an easy star, pretty vanilla. With just a touch of skill, breathtaking view from the bridge is completely obtainable. One detour into tiny huge island with uh, landmines just placed every which way. There's actually only two stars that we can obtain here. That is the rematch with Koopa the Quick and a theoretical star for scaling the mountain in the large world. That's not terribly difficult, but again, there is a box at the end that we do have to contend with. Admittedly, scaling the island can be a little tricky when you're trying to avoid all the coins, but it's not too bad. Just kidding, I hate it. Moving on to TikTok Clock, we have potentially one of the most lucrative areas that we can possibly have. There are no theoretical stars here. All these stars are 100% reasonably obtained, don't have to do any, uh, you know, box manipulation or anything like that. There's a total of four stars out of the six we can get here. The only reason we can't get the other two, of course, is because they do involve uh, coins. 100 coin star and the red coin star are, of course, off the table, but the rest of the stars in TikTok clock are completely obtainable. Five, my bad, we can actually get five stars in this level, making it the best level we've had so far. Well, I guess Womp's Fortress was also five stars, but this one feels so much better because it's the next to last level. The five stars in this area actually bring our star count up to a monstrous 28 stars collected so far. And good thing, I suppose, because we only have one more reasonable level left, so I guess it's good that we got a lot here, because we kind of needed them. Finally, on to the final actual level of the game in Rainbow Ride. I never did Bowser in the Fire Sea, did I? Boop. Bowser in the Fire Sea is, unfortunately, lined with landmines again. Damn it, Bowser. Also, can we just real talk how awesome this theme is? It's amazing. I love this theme, but with that said, even if we can get into the level, we really can't progress very far because we have to grab onto a pole, basically right at the beginning of the level. As you may or may not know, uh, blows us up. That pole right there. The bane of our existence right now. I decided to turn on some jumping codes and see if we could even make the transition into the Bowser area. I have really low hopes for this one, but you never know, hey? We've been surprised before, the Thwomps didn't blow us up, the Thwomps were nice and friendly. Uh, you know, maybe this transition is just the same. Nope. Finally, onto the last actual level of the game, Rainbow Ride. While a bit tricky, there's really nothing specifically too terribly bad here. Honestly, it's basically just vanilla Rainbow Ride, with the exception of if you touch anything, you die. If you fall off, you die. If you do a lot of things, you end up dying. Overall, I have to say, I'm rather surprised with how simple Rainbow Ride actually was. All of these stars, except for somewhere over the rainbow, and of course, the red coins and coin-based stars are obtainable in this level. It's not even specifically difficult. It's all relatively vanilla towards the actual game. It's Rainbow Ride. This is supposed to be the most difficult area in the game. Wider open areas and less to work with in this mod actually ends up working to your advantage. I am proud because I actually learned how to do a neat little speedrunning trick to get rid of that absolutely obnoxious carpet section at the beginning. You know, we're going to be riding the rest of the carpet, but hey, any carpet that you can remove from your life is definitely good. It's not entirely factual. If you're a carpet lover, uh, if you're a carpet lover, I'm sorry. Riding the carpet up and onto the house is also a very simple way to get the star on the front of the ship as well. With an only somewhat well-timed and well-positioned jump, you can make it right over no problem. Making our way up to Bowser 3, I basically just assumed that you couldn't enter in the first place, so I just went ahead and turned off the codes because it's the same transition that we've had for Bowser 2. <laughs> You know, I should have known that doing that was going to blow me up, but I just wasn't expecting it for some reason. That really surprised me, actually. Even if we could make it to Bowser, which we can't, because one, there is an entire section where you have to grab a pole, completely unavoidable, unfortunately, so really not a whole lot of hope for us actually getting to Bowser. Even if we could get to that point, again, he's guarded by a landmined pipe that he's uh, very intelligently put there. Well, well done. Well done on that. Again, this spot is completely impassable to my knowledge, at least to my skill level. I don't know of any way to bypass this. Kind of a bummer of an end.
realistically. And with that unfortunate defeat placed at our side, gotta hold that L yet again. Overall, we were able to obtain 32 stars, or 37 if you count the box stars. Hey everybody, Editor Newborn Kila here, and I just wanted to clarify, there's actually 32 stars and 40 with all of the theoretical stars. On screen, I've put a list of all of the obtained stars and all of the obtained theoretical stars will have question marks next to them. Which I do, but... You know, hey, for the sake of the challenge, let me know if you think these stars, again, should be included in the comments down below. In summary, would I recommend trying this? Probably not. But hey, if this is the kind of thing that interests you, then uh, please do consider leaving a like, subscribing, hitting the bell, it all helps me out an awful lot. And hey, maybe people will even see this video. I worked real hard on it, and I have planned to make a lot more. Let me know what challenges you'd like to see me do in the future. No coins, all coins, no enemies, no pushing the Z button, no pushing uh, uh, the pause button, no pushing my buttons. That's, that's actually a run that's just fun. Thank you so much to my wonderful patrons. I don't say it enough, but I do of course have them on screen right now. You can check out their wonderful, beautiful names. Wow. Wow, so beautiful. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I'm Newborn Keelik and I will see you in the next one. I'm out.